ready for a Marvel mashup! Hey guys, Nick here from Just Be Studios, and I am doing another vlog. This is a movie review of two Marvel movies going head to head. First up, we got Captain America the Winter Soldier. Second up, Boom! The Amazing Spider-Man Q. Fight! Alright. So, Captain America 2, The Winter Soldier. That was an amazing movie. Uh, just the plot overall was cool. They threw in quite a few scenes that you didn't expect. They had fantastic character development. And all the special effects CG. It seemed pretty spot on. I mean, it wasn't perfect. But just like the first Captain America uh, was the best of the Wave 1 Avenger movies, I have a feeling that Captain America 2 The Winter Soldier is going to be the best of the Wave 2 Avenger movies. But hey, don't know yet because we're still waiting for the final one, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh yeah, that's going to be it. The most 50-50 movie that I've seen in a while. It could go really well, or... Eh. But anyway, on to the second movie. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So, I'm gonna admit, I was a little worried walking into this movie. I mean, it felt like they are doing the same exact formula they did with Spider-Man 3. With having three villains... I was kind of scared that they would get rushed. So I had a theory that Rhino would only be in the beginning and the end, Electro would be the main villain, and we see Goblin in the final battle. And hey, that was the only way I could see it working, and that was what they did. So, whew, because of that, villains weren't completely rushed, but the rest of the plot was. When you're sitting in the movie, they try to throw everything at you, like, Oh, here's uh, Harry and Peter, and oh, hey, 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 look, it's Gwen Stacy, and oh, hey, look who this is, and oh, my gosh, there's a fight, oh, wow. And they just kept throwing it at you, and you were just going, whoa, little too much, okay? I mean, they had so many side plots and subplots that it was kind of confusing keeping track of all of them. And I would have loved to see more focus done to parts like the relationship of Harry and Peter Parker and stuff like Gwen and Peter. The interactions that those two plots had were fantastic, but it was so minor that you felt like, uh, I'm not as feely as I could have been. But anyway... Yeah, it, it felt a little rushed. I would have been more than happy to give it the perfect 5 out of 5, but Amazing Spider-Man, I'm sorry. But it was just too rushed. Special effects, fantastic. Jamie Foxx and Dane DeHaan. <laughs> Applause goes to them. They were amazing on camera. Dane DeHaan playing Harry Osborn. I thought it was going to be a little weird with the he emo Harry going, Hey, I remember you, Peter. And I was thinking, oh, okay, this is awkward. And Jamie Foxx, them going to the Ultimates, I was happy with, but I wasn't sure how well of a job Jamie Foxx would do. I knew he'd do good, but he could do something like Christopher Bale on that man that would be kind of eh. But nope, they pulled it off, did a fantastic job, and they were amazing. They were probably the best part of the Amazing Spider-Man 2, but just because it felt so rushed, can't give uh, the Amazing Spider-Man perfect 5 out of 5. Don't even know if I can give it a 4 out of 5. I'm going to have to give it 3.5 stars for the Amazing Spider-Man. On the other hand, Captain America the Winter Soldier, Pretty flawless overall. So I recommend you go see Captain America the Winter Soldier. Then go back in the theater and watch Captain America the Winter Soldier again. 
And then watch The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And then watch Captain America the Winter Soldier again. But anyway, uh, now on to the spoiler part of the review. So if you haven't seen uh, either movie and you don't want to get spoiled, I recommend that you stop watching the video around here. And if not, you've been warned. Alright, so now spoiler review for Captain America the Winter Soldier. Okay, holy crap. S.H.I.E.L.D. is no longer... Pfft, did not see that coming, that's for sure. And Hydra is S.H.I.E.L.D. Pfft, did not see that coming. Yeah, that was pretty wow. Um, so how's Avengers 2 gonna work again? Let's see. Tony Stark blew up all of his suits. Hey, Thor doesn't want to be a god anymore. He doesn't want to, he just wants to be normal. And hey, ha, 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 S.H.I.E.L.D. is gone. Um, I'm thinking we're pretty screwed when Ultron comes. I don't know about you, but unless Spider-Man and Wolverine ditch Fox and Sony and head on over to Marvel Studios, I think the Avengers are pretty screwed. And that end credit scene, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. That was awesome. But if you didn't understand that uh, post credit scene, well, basically, Scarlet Witch and uh, Quicksilver, they couldn't explain the origins of them, so they just said, it's a miracle. There are the kids of Magneto, who is owned by Fox. They aren't even allowed to say mutant. So, yeah, they said, oh my gosh, these kids are miracles. Nope, not mutants. What are mutants? They're miracles. Yeah, they were really brief on Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, their origins, and talking about them. Because they can't say too much, because... One, they're trying to save it for the Avenger, then two, Fox owns the origin story, essentially, because they have Magneto. Yeah, on a side note, oh my gosh, Quicksilver, in Day of the Future Past, and Quicksilver in Avengers 2. This is going to be a Quicksilver year, uh, but I'm probably more excited for Quicksilver in Day of the Future Past, just because they can explain the origin story that he is Magneto's son. And also, I would have rather preferred Ant-Man than Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. Save them for Avengers 3. I want to see Ant-Man make Ultron. That would be awesome. And the amazing Spider-Man 2. Well, oh my gosh, that... Who else saw Gwen Stacy getting killed? That was like the most obvious thing ever. If you've seen the trailers, they gave, they won, gave way too much away in the trailers. And two, 90% of what you see in the trailers isn't in the actual movie. I kind of had a problem with that. I'm okay when trailers do that, but where it's like a normal trailer, they have all these awesome scenes and then go, alright, so let's just dump that and start fresh, essentially, not include any of the scenes. That's kind of weird. I'm okay if they also modify scenes, like, alright, so we'll have the scene look like this in the trailer, then when you're actually editing, you go, huh, you know, this doesn't look right. Let's fix it up a bit. That I'm okay with. And I'm, I'm just saying, there were too many... Well, I really want to see the... Osborne has you on their radar. Why? Isn't that the question of the day? That scene looks so cool! But nope, toss it aside. I would, I honestly think... If they include all the deleted scenes into the movie, the director's cut, that would be a better movie than the actual one. Because it gets the length it deserves, really. You get the Harry and the Peter relationship being friends again scenes, and odds are you'll get uh, married, or not, uh, oh, that's another thing, but you'll get Gwen Stacy and Peter, some more scenes with them, and you get Mary Jane. Yes, Mary Jane was actually in the movie. But Sony went, no, nope, we don't need her, whack, and they cut her from the entire movie. I understand, finally you realize you're fitting too much into the movie. But I kind of feel bad for the actress they cast as Mary Jane. She showed up on filming day and they were like, oh no, we don't need you anymore, you're fired, get off my set. But I want to be Mary 
Actually, nope, get off the set. So yeah, um, Mark Webb, I really liked the first Amazing Spider-Man. Amazing Spider-Man 2 was a huge letdown for me. I still really like you as a director. I want Andrew Garfield to stay Spider-Man. But, come on, you guys gotta get your act together. Don't include three movies worth of stuff into one movie. I mean, they're also trying to fit Sinister Six in there. I mean, let them have their own origin in the Sinister Six movie. I mean, Avengers did a good job of them telling the origin and then they just come together. I don't want that for Sinister Six. I want Sinister Six. Hey, you hate Spider-Man. I hate Spider-Man. Hey, you're this new villain. What's his name? Dr. Ock? You can join our group. We're going to go kill Spider-Man. That would be cool. Instead of Green Goblin going, Alright, I'm Green Goblin. I hate Spider-Man. I'm going to create a couple villains to join me and kill Spider-Man. If you're doing that in the Spider-Man movies, what's the point of a Sinister Six? It will just be one battle, them as a group. Hey, we're Sinister Six. Let's go Spider-Man. Movie over. That's kind of... <sighs> Although we did get to see who the Sinister Six are. If you watch the credits, the actual credits, you see kind of blueprints of all of the Sinister Six villains. So you can go see the movie again if you already saw it and check that out. And also uh, the end credit scene of the X-Men. No, X-Men are not going to cross over with Spider-Man, even though that would be so freaking awesome. Not going to happen. Truth says what happened was Mark Webb had a contract with Fox doing an X-Men thing. He backed out of it to do Spider-Man 2. So Fox said, okay, we'll let you do that if you promote X-Men Day of the Future Past. And Sony was like, okay, yay, we don't have a post-credit scene. Come over here, send us our post-credit scene. So it was a win-win, really, for both sides, kind of. So, who wins the mashup? Captain America versus Spider-Man? Spider-Man! Just kidding, no, get out of here. Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Go see it, it's a movie worth seeing. So thank you guys for watching. Please like, favorite, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with all your friends. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Later! Woo!